Hi everyone, today we are discussing Raptor, a new methodology for indexing and retrieving documents in a comprehensive and structured manner. Unlike conventional methods that often rely on retrieving short, contiguous text chunks, Raptor adopts a bottom-up approach by clustering and summarizing text segments to form a hierarchical tree structure. This structure is key to Raptor's function as it captures both high-level and detailed aspects of texts, which is particularly useful for complex thematic queries and multi-step reasoning in question-answering tasks. This process involves segmenting documents into shorter texts, so-called chunks, and embedding them using models like Asperts or the embedding models from OpenAI. The embeddings are then clustered by a Gaussian mixed model algorithm, and then we summarize the clusters by using a large language model. The summaries form nodes in a tree, with higher level nodes providing more abstract summaries. Let's consider an example. Suppose we have 10 document chunks that belong to one large handbook. Instead of just embedding the chunks and performing retrieval on them, we embed the chunks, then run a dimensional reduction on them, and then we cluster the results with a clustering algorithm. We then take all the chunks belong to each cluster and let an LLM summarize each of them. The summaries are then again embedded and clustered, repeating the process until reaching the token limit of the model. Okay, that was the theory of Raptor. Let's now do this with code. As always, you will find the link to the notebook in the description. Okay, I'm currently in VS Code, and here on the left you can see we've got the Raptor IPython notebook, and there is a data folder which contains three data.txt files, data1, data2, and data3. So this um, text is about a fictional restaurant called Bella Vista, and the first file contains some generic information about the food which is offered and so on and so on. Data2.txt offers the uh, history or the biography of the owner, Giovanni, and we can see the history, the journey of Giovanni, and so on and so on. So a lot of information about Giovanni. And then we've got data3.txt, which contains additional information about the restaurant. So data2.txt um, is very important because, yeah, it's different from the rest because this is the information about a person and this is information about the restaurant itself. So this is where we're gonna build our clusters. The first step in our notebook is to install the required dependencies. We've got a lot of dependencies like UMAP, sklearn, langchain, and some more. So to do this, we can just run pip install minus r and then requirements.txt. This will install all of the required dependency. Okay, now let's walk through the code. So the first step is we import a directory loader to import every document which is in the data directory and has got a .txt ending. We load that into memory and this will create three different chunks. So one chunk for every file in our directory. Okay, next step is to import a recursive character text splitter to create multiple chunks from our three original documents. We set the chunk size, let's do this. Let's set it to 200, so we've got a lot of different chunks. And now we want to split the documents into very different um, documents. We then extract the page content attribute from the documents class, so this only contains the text. And we're gonna use that text to create then our cluster. So first, before we do that, let's check how large our original documents are. So we can create a little function and this returns the number of tokens in a text string. So we use a tokenizer to um, calculate the number of tokens in each text. So we iterate over the text and now we've got this list of different numbers. So the length of our, of our tokens and now we can display that. So we can see that our text chunks are at max 50 tokens and here is the frequency. So I guess, yeah, this is fine, quite small chunks, but for our purpose, that's okay. The next step is we check uh, the complete token size of our documents so we can see if all of the documents fit in the context window of our LLM. So the context window of the models, of course, differ from model to model, but in our case, we use a 16K model, so the complete documents fit in the context window of our model, so we don't have to make some checks to not exceed the maximum number of tokens in the model when we summarize our root document. Okay, the next step is to create an embedding model instance and to create the LLM instance. We will use GPT 3.5 Turbo because it's cheaper than GPT 4 and sufficient for our use case. And the next step is that 
we use the embedding model and run the embed query method over each text. So we get a list of global embeddings back. So this list now contains the semantic meaning in a numerical format of each of the chunks. So we save that here. And now we can use the numerical representation to make our clusters. So the next step is to create a reduce cluster embeddings function. And what we're going to do here is we use the UMAP class and UMAP is an algorithm which reduces the dimensions of the embeddings from 1536 to only two dimensions, but keep the semantic meaning as good as possible. Of course, that's not totally possible because the dimension reduction, of course, of course means that you lose information, but we need that because otherwise the calculation of the clusters would be quite expensive. So we reduce the dimensions to only two. And let's maybe check the first global embeddings variable here. So we use index zero, so you can see how it looks like. So this is how it currently looks, looks like. So we've got 1536 numbers. And after the uh, reduction step, it looks different. I'm gonna always, we're gonna also include this here. So let's, let's print that here. So this may also take a few seconds because this is still computationally expensive. So this is the result. As you can see, we only got two numbers instead of 1,536. And now we can visualize these two numbers because with these two dimensions, we can of course do that on the Y axis and the X axis here. So this is how the embeddings look like on a two dimensional space. And now we want to cluster that. So the next step is to get the optimal number of clusters. So this function calculates the optimal number of clusters for a given data set. So these are our global embeddings by finding the number of clusters by calculating a so-called big, big stance for Bayesian information criterion. This is a score which we can then compare. So we calculate two clusters, calculate the score, then three clusters, four clusters, and so on. And we um, want to get the best score. So if the score is highest for six clusters, then we will continue by calculating six, six clusters. So this is what's gonna happen here. So these are the number of clusters and we pass the embeddings. So here is where we fit our model. And in the next step, we can use the predict probability function where we predict the probability that one, embeddings belong, one embedding belongs to cluster one, two or three, and so on and so on. So this is what our function will return. So first we're gonna create the function and then we are gonna calculate that. And now after that, we are gonna visualize the embeddings again. And now we can see that the optimal number of clusters are five. And so we can see we've got five clusters and these are our clusters. We can see this is a cluster, this is a cluster, this is a cluster, and this is a cluster. And here we've got a very small cluster on top. The next step is to get all of the text chunks related to this cluster and this cluster and so on and so on and concatenate the texts. And then we make a request to the LLM with all of the concatenated texts and ask the LLM to write a summary for each cluster. So before we can do that, we first have to prepare the data set. So we use pandas to get all of the texts, get all of the embeddings and get the cluster labels. So this makes it easier to work with them. So this is how it looks like. So we've got our original text, we've got the embedding and we've got the cluster labels. So this text belongs to cluster one, this text also be belongs to cluster one and this belongs to cluster two. The next step here is to concatenate our original texts. So we can use this little helper function. We get the unique number of clusters. Then we create subclusters and convert the texts of each of the subclusters to a list. And then we join the uh, texts here with these little separators. And at the end, we've got multiple different texts. So we run the function now, and this is how it looks like. So you can see we've got one, two, three, um, four and zero. And here it is. This is a very long text. And each of the texts here are separated by the separator. And this is what we want to summarize with an LLM. So we create a simple chain with the language and expression language, prompt, model, and an output parser. 
and the prompt is you are an assistant to create a detailed summary of the text input provided. And now we're gonna loop over each of the text in the summaries and again save that in another dictionary. So we're gonna run that. Now let's have a look at how a summary looks like. So again we've got this dictionary and here we can see the text describes a culinary journey through various regions of Italy. So yeah, these are clearly summaries of the text we provided before. And now we want to embed the summaries again. So we again run the embed query function of our embedding model and loop over each of the values in this dictionary. And then after that, we got a new array. And again, we perform the clustering with GMM. So we first make a dimension reduction with UMAP and then we perform the clustering algorithm. And we receive the labels again for our new clusters of the summaries. So this will take some seconds. And now we can see how many clusters we've got left. So let's have a look um, have a look at this. And now we only got a single cluster. So the algorithm was not able to create more clusters from that. So we've got these five text summaries, which all belong to this cluster zero. And again, we're gonna write a summary or let the LLM write a summary where we provide the combined text. And this will now be our final summary. So this will again take a few seconds and this is how it looks like. So this is now our highest level summary of the text. What we're gonna do in the next step is heavily influenced by how we want to retrieve the documents from the vector store. So we've got two options, tree traverse retrieval and collapsed tree retrieval. Tree traversal starts at the root level of the tree and retrieves the top K documents of a node based on the cos and similarity of the vector. So at each level, it retrieves the top K documents from the child node. So we've got at the end, let's say we've got three layers. Um, we at the end have got uh, 12 documents if we, if we retrieve four documents at each step. Another approach is to use collapsed tree retrieval. Collapse tree retrieval collapses the tree into a single layer and retrieves nodes until a threshold number of tokens is reached based on the cosine similarity of the query vector. The collapse tree retrieval is a much simpler method and seems to be even a little bit superior in comparison to the tree traversal retrieval. So we're gonna use that now in our code. So in this approach, we just gonna extract the text of the data frame. We get the text of our cluster text and the text of our final summaries. And we combine that to a single large list of texts, which contains the root documents and also the summaries. And then we just store that combined text list in our vector store. So each of them is now equally important for retrieval. The next step is now to get the final number of documents we want to retrieve from our retriever. So this is a function that increases the number of increased documents from the retriever by one and checks if that number of tokens which we get from a combined text which we create here exceeds the maximum threshold of our context window of the model. So this will be increased by one. We could also do that a little bit different, but because this, yeah, it's I think it's a little bit too slow for real world application, but I'm just gonna show you how to perform that. So this is the query and this is the maximum threshold and we start with four documents. And if the value is smaller, then it will increase the number by one from four to five, from five to six and so on and so on. So I guess the number will be quite high. So maybe we should have started with a higher number. And I'm really curious how it looks like. As you can see, this is far too much for a real world chatbot. And I think there should be a better and more efficient approach to do that. So at the end, it took almost 50 seconds and our final number is 207. So I think this might be also too high. So maybe we should set a maximum number of documents, but because I highly doubt that we won't have much noise in the, inside um, the retrieved documents, but let's try it. So we set up our retriever with the maximum number of tokens we can pass and just dump everything to the model. So this is the vector store. And now we create our final chain. So we're gonna of course store that in a retriever variable. Retriever equals this. And now we can create our chain. So answer the question based only on the following context. So this is what we're gonna retrieve from our retriever. And this is the answer which we pass. So we create our chat prompt template 
and then we pass the question to the retriever and um, use the invoke method, which is equal to the get relevant documents method. We formatted the documents to only have got the page content, create a new line from that, and we pass in the question as it is. We pass that to the prompt, we pass the final prompt to the model, and we uh, pass that to an output parser. So now we want to answer the question, who is the owner of the restaurant? Let's see what the answer is. And we can see Giovanni Di Napoli is owner of the restaurant. That's correct. So that was Raptor. I really like the combination of classic machine learning techniques and generative AI. Really nice. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.